All right, guys, so in today's video, you're gonna see a live lesson we did with our friend Jeff. If you didn't see, we did two on-course videos with Jeff. Uh, first one, kind of just playing for fun, analyzing his game. The second one, doing a little bit of swing work. And if you saw that, we were really working on the turning during the backswing. So getting his hips and his core turning, that will enable him to make a bigger full shoulder turn, get the hand path deeper, ultimately hit the ball more solid, farther, and really eliminate those right shots. Now, if you watch that video, <clears throat> excuse me, you saw that, you can only do so many things at one time, right? So on the golf course, when we're doing that, it's like, hey, just doing the turn is enough. There's other things in his swing that we're gonna be able to do, right? You can see during the takeaway, his hand path goes out, which gets the club path inside. That leads to getting a little bit flat on the way back, which leads to getting a little bit steep on the way down, which leads to him having to stand up, some of that early extension. That we will fix as we go, but if we don't get the turn first, we'll never fix any of those other things permanently. And that's a good lesson learned. You have to find the big root causes and fix those first. So today's video, probably 15, 20 minutes of us going through a live lesson, feels, drills, etc., that you can use in your own game. Leave me a comment down below. Let me know, do you like these style videos? Do you wanna see more live lessons? We would love to do more uh, of these for you. As always, really appreciate you guys being here and watching with us. All right, Mr. Jeff, appreciate you coming back out here today. Thanks nice for being here with us. Thank you for inviting me again. Some of you guys may have seen uh, earlier this week and last week, Jeff and I went and played out on the course, did a little two-man scramble, and really just played kind of to observe your game and have fun on the front nine. And then the back nine, we started talking a little bit about the swing stuff. Right. Um, and I know for you, and Jeff, we said we're about a 14 handicap. Right. And some of the things we were talking about with the swing was uh, really to, to eliminate some of the two-way misses, Right, have the ball kind of drawing back towards the target, Correct. getting rid of some of the right misses, also adding some distance. We'll take some of that too. And primarily, we were talking about the backswing, right? The, the sway turn. versus the turn. Yep. So, have you been doing a little bit of that since it's, we played? I, I practice it some, and I played with it some, and I've seen quite an improvement already. Okay, great. Yep. It's good. Awesome. It's good. And can you kind of show me and show us here what it is that you're feeling as you're doing it, and then? What I'd like to do is talk through some of those pieces. We'll uh, film your swing okay. and we'll dig into it and see what we have to do. But if you could kind of just guide me through like what it is you're feeling. I think one of the things that really helped me was to step back and open and flare open the back uh, foot a little bit seemed to allow me to make more of a turn. That's oh. the first thing I noticed. Real. Second thing, you got me a little more athletically with a knee bend. Mm -hmm. So between that, those combinations and then uh, it was a drill with one of the guys you had out here where he was actually it was back foot was helping me get through. So there are the three things that I'm just taking to the range and all of them combined is I've seen a difference already. It's not there 100% of course, sure, sure. but I definitely can tell a difference. And on the course, uh, when I hit it good, I, I, I mean, I hit it better than I did before for sure. Awesome, beautiful. Yeah, yeah. And we can show some of the old, like kind of where we, if you like, show us the old way and we can, we can show some of the old videos as well. Well, I think the old way, I was pretty much kind square, of square up. Yeah. And, and as you pointed out that day, nothing really was happening here. I was kind of locked up. It was more upper body arm stuff. Yeah. This kind of freed me up to make a turn. And I mean, it's a, it's a huge difference. I did notice the slower I make that turn, the more successful the shot is. Okay. When I rush a little bit, it can get a little ugly. So it's yeah. tempo thing still, you know, an issue. A little As bit. is life yeah. usually too yeah. outside of golf. Yeah. So let's take your, uh, show me for a second your old way. Just show like a, just <laughs> I a square I don't remember stance. that to be honest. <laughs> I'm going to move you in. Your brain still will know it for better or worse. So what we used to have here with Jeff is the stance was very square, right? From the face on and down the line angle. Mm -hmm. So very square target. There was very little knee flex. Right. I was right? pretty upright. Right. Exactly. Yep. And then during the backswing, what would happen is Jeff's hips would sway away from the target to the right. Mm -hmm. And when there's any sway of the hips or there's too much sway, that's always going to inhibit turn. And so what we saw when we were out there, I think the first one we filmed, basically we get it, keep going up to the top. We go up to the top and the shoulders would kind of stop at like 60 or 70 degrees. So it was very little turn, mm -hmm. which wouldn't enable us uh, to be able to get the hand path up and back enough to be able to swing from inside, produce power, all those things. And right. so really the main swing fault we're trying to fix is the, the hips going too far away from the target. Mm -hmm. That was the main thing, right? Correct. And so we wanted to take these hips and start turning them towards the target, turning them towards the target, right? Yep. And so let's square up your stance just for a sec again. So I was like, hey, Jeff, listen, let's take this hip here and let's go a little wider with your, with your stance there, that a baby. So we were on the course and saying, hey, let's pull this hip back around so the hip turns inside. And we were doing that for a couple of swings just to start to get some, some motion. I said, hey, there's a wall here. 
and don't hit that as we turn. And then what happened when Jeff would do that is he would get this turning part right, but the head would go way off the target to the right. Correct. Right? That's correct. And so what we ended up doing is I'd have my hand up here and my hand by the hip, and I'd be turning the hip while keeping the head centered. So basically, without the head moving excessively away from the target, what we want to do in our swing is turn the hip as far as we can without the head going away. That's the goal. And as we were doing that, we're like, well, hey, if we want to turn the hip, we might as well make our life easier. Let's bring the foot back slightly and let's flare it slightly, right? right? Yep. And as Jeff mentioned for him, the foot being back and the flare makes it easier to turn the hips. And that's going to be true for you as well. Right. Now, we don't want to have it like crazy back, obviously, mm -hmm. but a few degrees back with a few degrees of flare um, would be good. So just to kind of give you guys a recap, that's what we were talking about when we played. Correct. Can we hit maybe two shots? Um, let's, let me film them and then we can take a look at them and see where we're at relative to those. And we'll, uh, we'll dig in. So you can just hit two at your own pace, and we will take a look-see. I have to just stand here to get this one for a second. How was that one? I like it. Okay. Right at the target, even. A little draw? Yep. Okay. Which is what you said would happen, and it, it definitely has. Good. Yeah, part of that increase in that turn for us is eliminating some of those right shots where the ball's still going to launch to the right, but it'll allow it to curve back to the left. One-way shot pattern. Beautiful. So that's about perfect, huh? Both of those were fine. Now, what club do you have in your bag Just there? Just a pitching wedge here. Okay, so let's let's do something that's a little bit more difficult for you. You got your seven? I do. Okay, cool. Let's just do one with that, and then we'll uh, take a look-see. So same feels, stance is slightly closed, foot is flared, a little bit of knee bend at setup. And when we're looking at the amount of knee bend at setup position, we're always trying to get the kneecaps over the balls of the feet. So Jeff, just take your setup for a sec. If we look at the amount of knee bend from down the line, and basically getting the knee bend correct just helps with the balance. It's, it's something we don't have to think about then. So we want to have, the amount of knee bend we should have is the kneecap should be over the balls of the feet, That's which fine. is roughly the edge of the shoelaces. That's what you're looking for, guys, when you're looking at that. So let's go, same thing, seven iron. Feeling the hip turning. Beautiful. Now, to your point before, that ball overdrew to the left, but it was hit solid, it was hit far, Right, and if good. we if we know it's drawing, and we can aim right and play for it, like if that was our miss, when Jeff and I played, there's a little bit of two way miss going on. But in particular, we we're really like, hey, let's let's get rid of the right miss. Like let's not have a ball going to the right. And so effectively, what I want Jeff to do, and if you miss to the right, is almost like you'd put a wall like on the right edge of the green. You want it to launch over there, but it should never go to the right of that. Never curve right, and never just straight push over to the right. That should be curving away from that wall, and the miss would be a little bit of an overdraw. And if you look at handicap levels, like the best players in the world in the lower handicaps, they would struggle with a slight overdraw. Like for most of us, like if we're a 14 handicap, if you're a 20 handicap, 30 handicap, if you got to the point where you drew every ball and the miss was they overcurved, we're in good company. Figure it out there, yeah. right? Not that you were complaining that, about that it. Would but be, just to... yeah, that would not be an issue. <laughs> now let's take a look at some of these swings here to see where we're at compared to where we were before. So from the down the line angle, we'd be looking at the, the knee bend mm -hmm. and, then the, and then the close stance, right? Yep. So in terms of the knee bend, we want to get those over the ball of the foot. So a little more. These have was a little that, bit was more. Was that one of the earlier shots? So that was with yeah. the pitching wedge? Yep. Okay. So we could do probably what you just felt with the seven iron. That one there, I definitely bent a little bit more little than more. I did with those, right? And so that when you when you do that knee bend, that should have the pressure feeling like just kind of forward of middle, yeah, no, ball the foot. Ball the foot is going to be the yeah. kind of the reference now. So pretty good there, mm -hmm. right? Pretty good there. Now I don't want the stance line to get any more closed than that. That's that's okay where that's at. Mm -hmm. Let's not go any more than that, right? Uh, what's the risk of going more than that? Well, if I get to a point where let's say I'm closed like 60 degrees, all of a sudden either my shoulder, like I'm going to be aimed so far right unless I really open my shoulders, that then we're just going to start having like opposite issues, okay. big pushes and big hooks. Okay. So let's just, maybe we'll put a little club on the ground and be like, hey, this is kind of a, a good amount. Okay. Foot flare looks good there. Now let's see from the face on, 
from the face on, setup pieces here look really good. Cool with all that. We can see the foot's flared. Mm -hmm. um, stance line's closed, everything's fine. Stronger grip pattern is good to close the face. Now what we're looking at is if we put a wall up by your hip. Yeah, I'm not sure I stayed in there or not. Yeah. So we almost want to put a wall by the right hip and a wall by the edge of the right part of your head. Mm -hmm. And we want both those to stay inside of that without the head without the head going excessively to the the right, right? So both those staying inside of that. So I would say, stay there, uh, yeah, I would say you do a pretty good job to about here. Mm -hmm. So we're at about hands hip high. And then from here to the top. Now, if we show, let's, if we look at a top of backswing from here, in fact, I have them on my phone. Mm -hmm. So look at the amount of shoulder turn and hip turn you had. I'd say 20 degrees of hip turn, maybe. Maybe. Maybe, maybe 70 degrees of shoulder turn. Yeah. Now there I'd say you have 40 degrees I'm of hip turn. closer. And 95 degrees of shoulder turn. So if we look at the white shirt backswing turn versus this new one, you can see some subtle differences. Mm -hmm. All of those pieces, again, really for like more power, more draw is what those are in for. Eliminate the right shots. So that was a nice, that was a nice little change there. Yeah, and it wasn't a hard one. It just took a little, little time. It wasn't bad. Yeah, it's not, wasn't like a, yeah, it wasn't a brutal big swing change. And that's one of the positives of like when we were out there, like if you guys ever go do an on course lesson and you work on it while you're playing, you can't do huge swing changes. It's so it's nice because you kind of like have to do something relatively simple. Even though for you in the beginning, it kind of felt like, whoa. But in reality, it's a minor, it's a minor thing, you know? Yeah, it, was not, it wasn't that bad. It's a minor deal. So as we're practicing this, basically we need to be able to keep doing the, the same things. Mm -hmm. We could talk about other little, little tweaks we would go through. Let's just do a couple, let's keep your seven iron in there. Okay. Let's put a couple clubs down for your stance just to, uh, like how far we want to close it. This will be our target line. And then I'm going to put this down for your stance line. I would say we could probably go into about that degree. So that would kind of be where your like your trail foot angle would be. And I can move the, yeah, I can yeah, move, I'm gonna move closer. Move it. Yeah, you, you get where you're comfy and then I'll move them. Let's say this is the first one. And then this would kind of be the second one. So yeah. you want it up in here uh, right more? About, well, yeah, I, I wouldn't go too, even if we're on that angle, I wouldn't go too far more close than that. Okay. Yeah, that'd be pretty good right there. Pretty good right there. And then the knee bend. Over the balls of the feet. Beautiful. And then what we're feeling from the face on angle is we got this wall here. So I'm going to pull this hip mm -hmm. without the head going back with it. Let's go ahead. Yep. Make a backswing. Beautiful. And what your sensation is, and you said that beautifully before, is you're not trying to rush it right off the bat. Yeah. It's a progressive, slowly zero to 100 the whole time up to the top. Good. So guys, if I'm doing this in your practice and you could put an object or like a bag here and an object by the head, you can have about an inch of head motion is okay, but we don't want much more than that. But the hips are going to turn the whole way. Beautiful. Now, if we watch Jeff's motion, right, there's other things in the puzzle to do, right? There's other parts that we want to work on, just like anyone's swing. But you can't do this stuff earlier if there's an issue. Like, you can't do the stuff through the ball if there's an issue earlier on that's causing it. So for us, it's like, hey, let's hammer this home in first, and then let's start to tweak some of the other pieces that we need to through the ball. So for us, we're going to put the backswing turn uh, pieces in, eliminate the sway. That should help more draw more power, better contact, right? and eliminate the right misses. And anytime you're putting something in that you're changing, there should be some outcome goal that you're looking for outside of just the making it look better, like better contact, better direction, more distance, right? There should be some outcome goal. So let's do a couple more with just this here. With us feeling we're gonna do one or two reps and we'll hit a ball. Oh, okay. One or two little practice ones. I'm gonna move the hip and hold the head in place. Make sure you have a good knee bend, good. Beautiful. So we're eliminating the sway to the right and we're increasing the turn. And by Jeff increasing his hip turn, he's able to increase his shoulder turn, right? If we pull up a picture of the old versus the new, you could see, and you could hit, let's hit one, Jeff. You could see Jeff's hip turn before, maybe, you know, 10 degrees. Now it's 30 or 40. So that enables him to increase the shoulder turn without having to be more flexible or do anything different. So the foot is flared and pulled back to help the turn. Knees are bent. Beautiful job. Turn inside the wall. Beauty. Very nice. I mean, that's about how we draw it up. That's Piece solid. of cake, man. <laughs> that was solid. <laughs> so what we would do with Jeff, right, if we work through this, is I would now, we would have a period of time, what we're gonna do. There'd be a period of time of a sample size to test it. So he said, okay, before we had a 14 handicap, here were the misses. Let's say let's do this for 30 days, 60 days, 90 days, right, whatever the case is. You wanna give yourself a big enough sample size to work within. 
And then let's reanalyze it and say, hey, what else could I do to get better? What's the next piece? Is there anything else on the way back that would help, right? Like you can see in Jeff's backswing, there's some swing plane stuff we could talk about. But the way it's in there now, we're hitting it how we want. So you only change something if you have to change it, right? So I really like that for you. I think just when Jeff's practicing, when you're practicing, he needs to have, and you need to have feedback to know that you're doing it correctly. So there's no way Jeff could know when he's just feeling it if he's doing it correctly. There's no way I could know. There's no way you could know. There's just no way. Feeling real or different. So there's two options. One, you have to record it, right? So we could see it from face on, which I think is the best option. And or two, we would just have like a little object in here, right? So I'm gonna just put an object by Jeff's hip so you can see what I'm talking about. Um, and you could put that in there. That way, if you have an object by your hip and Jeff's like, okay, this is here. I know I can't hit it. That's another form where you have automatic so feedback. Talking like an aiming stick or something. Yeah, ground chair, kind of thing. something chair, like that. Okay, got it. So we just have a little club stand here that we're going to use. Like Jeff mentioned, you could put a stick in the ground, alignment rod, a chair, person, golf bag, something, right, that you would miss. And if you just take your setup, Jeff, basically the way you want to set this up, from the down the line angle, make it far enough back you don't hit it with your hands or club. Like Jeff would never hit this with his hands or club. And from face on, it could go a little higher, to be honest, up by the hip, but we've got about an inch of space, about two fingers between his trail thigh here and the object. So if, let's go do a backswing motion. He should clearly stay inside of that. So it's gonna give him different feedback to be able to accomplish the same thing. Now, as he's hitting, let's hit one with that, Jeff. As he's hitting this, I would watch the head motion from face on and make sure the head's not moving away from the target too much. If the head's moving this way too much, he's gonna hit some contact issues, fats and thins. So we might even put an object by the head as well. Same feels. So Jeff, that was beautiful. I appreciate that. Appreciate so for Jeff's motion and for your motion and your motion, everyone gets a car. You have to pick out right the right, the right thing. Now Jeff and I, when we talked about your game, it was beautiful because I got to watch it. We got to actually play. Correct. But oftentimes you're not gonna, you're not gonna get that, right? You gotta just kind of tell a coach, hey, here's what I'm seeing. It's so important that you diagnose the root causes correctly. You can see with Jeff's swing, with my swing, with anyone's swing, you could start at a bunch of different points and pick stuff out. But if you get the correct root cause, uh, if you pick the correct root cause, the sway with no turn that led to the later issues and you fix that, you can wipe away a bunch of later faults by picking that one good thing. So hopefully that helps. If you have sway, you wanna use that drill, regardless of what uh, issue you have, you wanna use these same principles we're talking about. Leave a like, click that like button for Jeff coming out for the on course and the uh, lesson video. Really appreciate you. Hopefully you guys like this. Let us know in the comments down below. Do you like this sort of format where Jeff and I got to play, you got to see his game, the lesson stuff. Do you wanna do more of that? Leave a comment down below. We appreciate you guys watching.